Someone asked, have you checked out the scriptable objects architecture talk? Who hasn't, man? Ryan Hipple. Ryan Hipple. He's a, if anyone here watched the, the show, um, Good Place. I, I haven't. So there's, it's basically, that there's a running joke in it where nobody knows what heaven looks like. But there's this one guy, some stoner in the middle of nowhere, who got it 100% right. <laughs> and they were so amazed, they have him up on the wall in a little frame going, this guy figured it out. He's a genius. And that's how I always feel like whenever someone brings up that talk, it's like, we should all just have a little frame picture of Ryan Hipple <laughs> on the wall going, he got it. He figured out how scriptable objects are supposed to yes, be. Yes, man. That's hilarious. <laughs> Although I saw a comment um, <clears throat> on, I think, my Singleton video about about how someone didn't like that, didn't like scriptable objects, how that wasn't meant for that. It was only meant for like configuration style things. Not to not for something like player health that has to be persisted from scene to scene and changed. Mm. But I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I admit I've I have a similar mm. stance. To I figured that. you like would. A, jokes aside, I I don't use scriptable objects in the way Ryan mm. Nipple does. I think the event thing is cool, but it's also very um I, I guess I have an issue with the fact that everything becomes uh individual components then. You have to make a literal individual asset for every event, every variable, yeah. every parameter. And it's just very heavy when conceptually the point should be things that are like, for example, it's cool for testing to be able to split out every event you might want to fire off. But realistically, you're building a lot of architecture for something that is basically debugging. And there's a reason you don't deploy your debug logs, yeah. right? <clears throat> They're for testing at the point. So I would rather build an event system that works runtime and use the uh the sort of scriptable object event system as a way of having one or two unique tests that i could then get rid of at build time i don't like the idea of using it as the entire architecture for your system because realistically you're not like being able to click a button in the asset folder to fire an event yeah. is cool but literally you're not doing that at runtime so there's no point in all of that architecture you know yeah and, and i think uh for me sort of the red flag was how when you switch to that paradigm of using scriptable objects, like you have to really lean into it and it really just becomes how your entire project is architected. And I don't know, I feel like anything like that yeah. kind of, it always raises red flags. Like uh, another example would be like using Zenject. Like you really have to lean into that and couple that into your project. And it be, just becomes such a fundamental part of your architecture that, you know, for mm -hmm. better or for worse, I don't know. I mean, I know it works for people, but Clearly it worked for him and his studio. 100%. And like they they can do one thing that a lot of companies can't, which is go yeah. fast. And that's honestly a really good selling point for his yeah. sort of solution. <clears throat> is because oftentimes you need to prototype really quickly and get lots of stuff done. And like I've not seen a system as robust for doing quick additional events and quick variables that are propagated yeah. throughout the app. And any, I've never seen a better system for that. <clears throat> I just don't think it's it's good for a large performant application especially because every single one of his events is fired using an event listener that he writes himself which uses the unity event system so not only is he doing triple objects and variables and lots of memory for everything he's also using unity events to dispatch all of those around which are notoriously the slowest of the events that you can use um but like i said if if the point is to do prototyping and get tons of stuff done I, I don't know a better system, but if it was for something that's actually a large scalable application, I would rather not. I would rather just use my own short event system with an internal hash map or something. Well, you know, and I think that's kind of the thing, I guess the fundamental problem I have, and it's a problem that I have that arises a lot in both Unity development and just any software development, that a solution comes out, everyone gets on board, and it's like, this is the, this is the way. But I think at the end of the day, you just have to, you know, you have to measure and weigh what it is you need. If you need to be agile, if you need rapid prototyping, you know, I think definitely learn about the technique of using scriptable objects and use it. If you need something more robust, or let's say you have a project with some insane, you know, dependency uh, architecture or whatever, or hierarchy, you know, use something like Zenject that, ha that can handle more complex uh, injection scenarios. If you need to be optimized, mm -hmm. if you need a project that's going to be on mobile or you're going to deploy it to the, the what's that, the Elon Musk's car. 
the Tesla, Tesla. and you need, you, you know, you have very tight uh, space to, to, to put the app out and memory footprint. And so you need to make sure it's optimized. Use Unity Dots. I, I just think anytime you anytime you look at something, you watch a video and it's about something like, you know, scriptable objects and you think, wow, this is it. This is this is a game changer. That should be a red flag because there's no one cookie cutter solution for all your situations. It's good to learn them all, but oh, I, yeah, it definitely should be in your yes. tool set because I spent the first two years of my Unity life <clears throat> not using simple objects at all. I, in fact, I spent the first year not using coroutines, and I spent the second year not using simple objects because they felt like additional features that mm. you didn't need. And once I started to use them, they became invaluable. So I'm not saying don't use simple objects. I use them all of the time, but I use them for a large set of configurable data or building up a small database of internal stuff, like um, kind of sim very small localization systems, or I would use them for, um, for example, I, did, I think I mentioned it last time, I did a grid uh, system where I wanted to write them as text files, but I don't want to store them as text files in the app because then you have to read the file every time you want to parse mm. the grid. So instead, I use that at uh, build time or at edit time, rather, where I have the text file and I'd read it into a scriptable object and that becomes my in-memory persistent store. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with them. It's just it's just the event approach I'm not fond yeah. of. Um, the, the rest of it, I, I think, is pretty good. Like it's definitely, it's definitely the preferable way to store uh, data between scenes in Unity. Like I honestly don't recommend uh, saving out to a persistence file just because you're right. changing scenes. That's insane. You should have your data stored in something like a scriptable object. Uh, in memory persistence between scenes and then when you need to save you save from a scriptable object serialize out to a file that's usually the approach yeah. that i would